Hello, this is Frank Favaro, president and founder of Serve Centric Coaching, and I'm super excited to be sponsoring the Undeniable Podcast. When we talk about business today, everyone's looking to create an advantage, but how do you find it? Everything is copied with technology. Innovation is hard to come by. We can find it with customer experience. The experience that you provide to your customers and to your employees determines the value you bring to the marketplace. We will create a plan for you that will get your business to the next level. You can find us at www.serve-centric.com. That's serve centric serve s-e-r-v-e hyphen centric c-e-n-t-r-i-c dot com and you can reach me personally at 330-715-5361 thank you david rosenberg how are you brother well i'm doing well peter how are you yeah well this is our first video recording Okay, that I'm doing, and it's undeniable, obviously. Um, and so I love that you are because we're in the same business, starting right marketing. That we're doing this for the first time, where we're elevating it in a marketing capacity. And I, I appreciate you being out. Oh, you're you're welcome. I guess we were told we have a face for radio, but I guess now we're we're past that. Exactly. Although I've been on some commercials. Because I was cheap labor. <laughs> I got been it. Same, same here. We've done that many times. Indeed. Indeed. Well, David, you know, you've done some tremendous um, work in the marketplace, not only locally for some of the, the iconic brands in Northeast Ohio, but uh, obviously nationally and internationally as well. And I really wanted to start with um, what motivated you, inspired you to get into, you know, we, we both came out of the the tail end of Mad Men, right? The three martini lunches. I remember going to some of those, you know, in the eighties and stuff, but uh, you know, you're just, you're my age or, or a few years older and you had that experience so that there, that, that really creative, ma magnificent time, particularly in Northeast Ohio, where we were almost like Mad Men, you know what I mean? So what inspired you to, to get into that, uh, that situation? Well, I, you know, to be honest, I, you know, everybody gets a, a break now and then. It's, I guess the, the skill is knowing when you do get a break. And yes. I started a business. First of all, I wanted to get in the ad business. So out of college, I, yeah. the first two years, I had a corporate job, a okay. large company, Fortune 50 company, but it wasn't for me. And right. living in actually, my territory was New York City, sort of exciting. But a friend of my dad's, my dad worked at the Plain Dealer, started his ad agency. And was okay. looking for somebody to help him get clients. You know, my dad called me and said, "You know, I think you, here's your chance if you want to get in the ad business." So I did. I moved from my my uh, job out east. Uh, took a half cut in pay. Right. To take this uh, account executive job at an agency, and I loved it. Um, Ten person agency, fast pace. You know, oh, that's, 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 the part, that's the best thing, right? Oh. Ten person agency. Yeah, that's it was great. You know, a lot yeah. of retail clients. And um, after about two years, one of my retail clients um, in year from Cleveland, so Carpet Barn and Tile House, wow. that was my, so I was handling that account. I will not say the name of the agency I work for, but mm -hmm. I was the account executive and the um, owner of Carpet Barn, Don Plasco, just said to me one day, you know, you know, just working with him on some ads, you know, sorry, kid, but we're firing you guys. And, you know, I said, well, why? And he said, well, no, you're great. And so the work we're doing is good. Right on, the work is great. We just don't like your boss. Sorry, you know, but we like you, kid. So think about it. But if you want to start your own business with one account, us, you know, we're interested. So what year was that? That was in 1981. I okay. literally got married six months before that. Oh. My wife, I met out east. So we moved from New Jersey to Cleveland. Six sure. months into it. And again, the company pay would have been another half of company pay, but it was my own business. So I talked to my wife, talked to my dad and said, what do you think? Yeah. And we said, you know what? It'll be good experience. And who expects the business to last that long anyways when you start it? So I did, you know, so I started with one account and I got lucky. I think it, it's some, in my mind, I probably wanted to start a business, but I wasn't really thinking, you know, two years into my agency career at the age of 26, I didn't think I was right. quite. Um, 
but you know, I got a lucky break. Um, Baptism of fire, too, right? Yeah. Not, and, and, you know, and, and, and the parting word, as Don Plasco said, yeah, I won't say the exact words, but you know, don't F, don't F it up, kid. And you know, and I said, okay, I won't F it up. And you know, I was motivated. I didn't, I didn't want to disappoint them. And so, you know, I, I you know, found freelancers, and you know, it was me. So I found freelancers uh, and got it done. And about six months after, I started to get confidence, and I started to knock on doors. Picked up a few other accounts, uh, all, all locally owned retail. That was our thing. Um, locally owned, family owned retail, you know, changed in Cleveland. Then I hired a guy. And then we picked up some more accounts and I hired a lady. And then, you know how it goes. So, yeah, well, listen, I started I started my, my business the same way with one waterbed emporium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember them. Ray Salupo, God rest his soul. Yeah, so I, I remember them. I, yeah, I know. And it, all of a sudden, you know, it was a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar year. You know, let's go. And it's like, yeah. whoa, figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So and I you learn, and so yeah. you know, and it just honestly, it, it took me five years till I really felt I was a solid business. Gotcha. You know, every day was a new day. Um, but I got to say, when I started, I was so excited. I mean, I just, you know, and I've been in business a long time now, but those first few years were so like like so raw, you know, every win was so celebrated, every loss you killed you. Um, sort of like the Monday after a Browns game, but I mean, it was just, <laughs> yeah. um, it was, it was so wonderful, you know, such a feeling of independence and yeah, I love that feeling. And yeah, after about five years, I started to feel, you know, I, I think we have something here. You know, I think at that point I was up to maybe six people. Um, you know, over the years, things have changed in our business, obviously, but, um, at the beginning, I just did the old school things. I mean, I just, you know, I did what I said I was going to do. Yep. You know, if somebody called me, I called them right back. Right. Um, get my promises. Yeah. You know, just, I did the small things well. And then I, you know, I sort of taught my staff the same thing. You know, guys, I'm not going to say we're the most creative yet or even the best agency, but, but nobody's going to like outwork us and, you know, out just, you know, be human beings. I mean, I think if we're we we're doing that, we're probably going to beat seventy percent of our competition. And then as years went by, you know, I think we started to get better at our, you know at our at our marketing skills. Um, but yeah, that's how we started. I mean, it wasn't it was a lucky break, but I think I did the right thing by taking it. You know, understanding and, it was a break and then taking it. And that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's not only hard work and luck, and you know, they say uh, the harder I work, the luckier I get, right? But yeah. also too, you know, uh, what I also also found is is that it's difficult when you start out because you got to take clients that you may not want to take sometimes and you get burned, right? And you and you got that scar, but it heals and you figure it out. And I think that ultimately what that teaches you is the kind of people that you want to be surrounded with. And I think that probably, I'm just assuming this, but when you hit your stride, you are surrounded by those types of clients as well as staff and yeah. vendors. Am I yeah, assuming you know what? That is a good point. I mean, that's a great point. Um, I had a lot of characters, as you probably did too, when you start yeah. out. The retail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I, I had, you know, from furniture dealers to car dealers to, you know, I had characters. Um, yeah, nowadays we're more selective, you know, we're more established, but I learned so much. You know, I, I just, I learned so many stories, you know, yeah, you know, some of them were like questionable, I guess you could say. But yeah, um, yeah when you build a business, you're not choosy. I mean, if oh. somebody wants to work for you with you, yeah, they're they're a great client. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I was a kid. I was you know a young kid in my twenties, just learning the business. But uh, yeah, and you had my year. You had my diapers for Austin eventually, right? <laughs> you're like, yeah. hey, I gotta I gotta feed this kid. <laughs> yeah, well, I got so, Austin and my older daughter Ariel. Yeah, it's right? it was. Yeah. But it was it was so much fun at the beginning. I mean, I've I've loved the marketing business overall for like over these forty years. But uh, the first few years, which I know you could relate to, it, it it is really exciting just being in business for yourself. Um, the marketing industry is a fun industry, um, but you got to perform. You know, you get a smart card every weekend, and yeah. you're playing retail. But yeah. I learned so much from like those first few years. My first few clients, um, some of them took me under their wing. I was like their another son to them. And yeah. um, I learned from them. I, I learned from them, you know, 
not only marketing, but you know, how they make money, you know, you know, and, and that's one thing I learned too, from a lot of my clients, just, you know, how to focus on what you do well, and maybe don't worry about the things you don't do as well and focus on that. So yeah, the first few years were fun characters. Um, no, I was, it, it fun? Wasn't it fun driving around town and then seeing, hey, we did that all go. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Or that billboard's ours. Or, you know, and you see and you're watching TV. And, hey, honey, come in. Look at this commercial we just did. You know what I mean? It's kind of cool. Like yeah. you said, it was the old Mad Men day. We were, we were, we were at the tail end of the Mad Men days, but I still remember presenting. I mean, there was no PowerPoint. I mean, we yeah. held up these artboards, you know, yeah. and like on a diesel and, you know, oh, just yeah. up to the next one. And yeah. oh, I loved it. You know, I, I read, look at the plane dealer over the weekend. I'd see like my yeah. clients, you know, in, in the newspaper. Yeah. Um, People sure. read a newspaper, billboards on, on 480 and 77. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, nowadays, you know, it's a little, it's different, obviously, you know. It's, it is. You, it's so fragmented and you're like, oh, well, okay, that, well, what? <laughs> yeah. that, that, now threads and we've got YouTube and we've got TikTok and we, you know. It's, 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 it's so free rolling, free yeah. rolling, um, like, you know, some video online yeah. somewhere. Yeah, well, you get a feed, right? And this, Sadly, uh, this TikTok influencer just died, and he's forty-one. Like, ooh, well, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Or, or Mr. Beast is, is just offered ten billion dollars for his YouTube channel. Okay, and he's opening up, you know, restaurants, pop-up restaurants. He's got four hundred burger joints. Wow, it's, I mean, it's a it's different world. Brother. It's a different world, and thankfully, I have younger people now running the business who, right, yeah. who grew up in that world and understand it. Well, I met your son, and I was really impressed with him. Austin's a terrific young man. Not Thank not you. young anymore, right? He's Thank he's you. a middle aged man. Uh, yeah, yes. But uh, you guys are still kicking, kicking it, man. Um, and, and you've got some great clients. Uh, and I want to I want to talk about you know the evolution sure. of Rosenberg Advertising. You know, in that beautiful home that you put it in, it's pretty mm -hmm. cool on the west side of Cleveland. And I also want to talk about. You know, maybe a, a molar or two with some of the, whether it's, a, you know, a, a partner or a, or a client or a vendor that really resonated with you. And then what did you do with that, with that moment, that blunt tide moment, if you will, you know, and, and we have so many of those, right? But uh, I want to do that after the break. Sure. And, and we'll come back after the break. This is Coach Cimarroni for Undeniable. We'll be right back. Infinite Search Solutions, recruitment and placement search services at its finest. Northeast Ohio's premier, easy, fast, and simple way to find the great and perfect candidate that you deserve. Matt Burns and his incredible team at Infinite Search Solutions are terrific. We are proud to have them as a sponsor. Reach out to Matt at 440-249-0485 or at their website, www in-f-i-n-i-t-e.com. And we're back with David Rosenberg. David, how you doing, Matt? Dude, doing all, Peter. Great to be with you. Great first, sec uh, first uh, session. Um, you know, I want to talk, David, a, a little bit, and I wanted this segment to be a little bit longer than the first segment, um, about some of the people that, you know, you talk about characters, but you, I'm sure as you, as you, as you aged as an agency, right, and, and you and you evolved and matured, you you met some pretty sophisticated people that were doing some really cool things. Was there any conversation that you had, or any moment in time that really resonated with you and evolved you, if you will, transformed you? And then what did you do with that transformation, all internally and externally? Yeah, um, I would say. There was one sit, one time in our business life and one client that sort of catapulted us. Um, it was about, we were about in our midway point, I would say, maybe not, maybe it was like 15 years into the business. Um, it, it was a situation that came to me. Um, this guy called and said he got my name and he was looking to hire a retail agency. Uh, his name was Charlie Bayer. He was an executive at Joanne Fabrics. And he just went to work for the sewing company. It was it was it was actually Viking Sewing. 
Um, oh, yeah. it was, okay. They were in Cleveland, but it was a wholesaler for a division of Husqvarna Viking. It's a sewing machine made in Sweden. Yes. And he, he, you know, used to work at Joanne Fabrics and he approached Joanne Fabrics and said, we'd like to lease out like 800 square feet in a store and put a sewing machine gallery in there. And we think this could be something. Okay. So they tested it out in Houston and in Hudson. They interviewed about five agencies and they were small. It was one store, but they had plans to grow. He liked me and they hired us and they basically wanted to test this concept out a store within a store selling yeah. sewing machines in a joint fabrics, which is a crafting store. Um, sure. And then he introduced me to his marketing manager, John Howitt. So basically the two of the guys and me, and then I got involved, my first employee, Dave Simon. So the guy I hired two and a half years into my business, he's still with me. So he's been with me actually 41 years. Oh, um, so Rob, that's awesome. And, wow. and Dave, Dave, whatever whatever happens anymore, dude. <laughs> you know what? We're lucky. I, I know we have our staff has been with us over 20 years, believe it or not. But uh, yes, Dave do. was, you know, was a perfect, he was an old school creative guy. Um, and basically their hope was to build this one store up to a chain of about 20 stores, you know, regionally. Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of, we did research with this, both these folks. First of all, they were great. Um, very sophisticated. I mean, Charlie, you know, basically was vice president of Joanne Fabrics. So, yeah. you know, he, he wasn't like the character of my first few clients. I mean, this was a very polished, you know, well, plus, Viking, isn't Viking like the, Bentley or Rolls Royce of sewing machines. I mean, it's it like, is. It yeah. is. Well, there's, yeah. there's, there's that, and then there's another one, Faf, and then there's Singer, which they've actually since merged. So all three of them are together. Okay. But um, makes sense. This concept, um, we decided we were going to do a lot of targeted direct mail. You know, it was not hard to find sewers. So you know, that was back in the day where, where direct mail, you know, was it was a really good way to pinpoint. Particularly if it was done right, it was killer. It was. Yeah. And so we started that strategy. So it went from one store to 10 stores, to 20 stores, which was their goal. Well, within two years, they were up to 250 stores. And um, it was just a, it, it was just a phenomenal, you know, yeah. success story. Um it became such a great account. I mean, it was basically the biggest and best account we've ever had. And wow. it, again, it, it, the growth was pretty quick. So we had to staff up. It was really the only time in my agency life that I staffed up for a client. I mean, usually sure. we were pretty lean. But so how many stores did it finally come to again? It ended up being, they had 250 stores within stores. So wow. it, it became, it became a, a, like a national situation. Sure. Um, we didn't really advertise like national TV. We almost almost looked at it as a spot market, but we were in we were in like forty markets, and uh, you know then multiple stores in the Dallas market, multiple stores in the Denver market, you know, and so on and so forth. But sure, this account just and I love these people. I mean, not only was it successful, they became like Dave and myself. They became our friends. Uh, awesome. We would go to conventions together. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't a big gambler, but a lot of conventions were in Las Vegas. So John, yeah. I would and Dave Simon would love to go to the casino. So I'd watch him gamble. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, we became friends with them. And sure. it was such a good ride, um, mm -hmm. pretty much a 10 year ride. And then they sold to a private equity firm and, you know, Amazing. things changed a little yeah. bit, but yeah. um, we still have them as a client. So, I mean, that we've had this client for about 25 years. Um, we've been, you know, up and down the roller coaster with them as they've been bought and sold by probably three private equity firms at this point. Okay. But um, it was it was my first, I would say, really big client. And But the, the thing was, I really like these people. I mean, I like all our clients, but I mean, they became really good friends. Um, unfortunately, both those gentlemen have passed away, uh, yeah. but they taught me a lot. Um, they were really fair people um, and they treated us with a lot of respect. And a lot of people think in our business, you need to be sort of like a hard ass to get ahead. And I realized that they were so nice to us and my staff, we would run through multiple brick walls from them. I mean, because they didn't really, they respected us. I mean, and we knew if something was important and sometimes they would require a new joint fabrics, you know, like a store would then say, okay, we want you to put your sewing gallery in. You have a week to get ready and we, we need to open in eight days. But we had to go to a market that maybe we didn't even know about and, yeah. 
scans ready and in direct mail ready to go. And, you know, so, I mean, you know, there were a lot of evenings or nights we we're working to get this done, but they asked in such a, you know, I mean, they expected us to do it, of course, but yeah, they, you know, it wasn't get this done or else kid. Um, you know, they appreciated that. And then we would work even harder for them. And that was a really good lesson I learned too. And that well, it was a springboard for other clients too. It gave you such a great platform and experience level and success, right? Deliverable, right? So yeah. that's the cool thing. It gave I mean, us a lot. Of, it actually gave us confidence to play in a little bit. You know, I think we went up from a, maybe a single A team to maybe a triple A, you know, a little bit of major league team. Sure. Um, sure. And it, it did help us. It, it made us all feel, and I know personally, it gave me a lot of confidence that, you know what, I think maybe we do know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously with the, what's happened with Joint Fabrics, you've seen, you know, the real highs and the real lows, um, yeah. particularly with what's going on with retail. Um, with with that, were you able to be some type of a um, you know a confidant, uh, maybe a, a shoulder to cry on to some degree, or you know some form of don't worry, we got you, you know, because retailers go through s- tough stuff, sometimes, you know, yeah, and they rely on that, they rely on their their people, you know, yeah, it was it was a it was and actually still is a very good relationship, and. Even some of the times when they were bought and sold, you know, and then after these two gentlemen, other people I had met then rose to the organization. And a young lady who was a salesperson initially became president. The the, the new company is now SVP, Singer Viking Fox. So they merged all three of them and they've since moved to Nashville where Singer is based out of. But, you know, so I was basically, I grew up with the person who, Barbara, who became the president and, oh yeah, confident. You know, they would sell to a private equity firm and she'd say, you know what, this may affect you, but we're not, you know, we're not, the relationship's still there, but you know, this, we, it may be bumpy for a while. And then when they were, you know, times when they were really tough and, you know, we would sometimes, you know, do things that maybe we wouldn't charge like we normally would charge just to help them get through some. So it was a two-way relationship. And that's one thing I've learned too, is sometimes, you know, Maybe you're not charging what you normally would charge. You're doing things to help somebody get through something. It's remembered. If you have a good relationship, it's remembered and it works both ways. So this is one of those cases where, again, it's a 25 year relationship. I mean, they were they were the marquee client for us and it's sort of springboard for us. But it's it's, you know, it's maybe not the same as it was, but on the other hand, it's still a 25 year relationship we have. Yeah. And it's I value those. And that's Another thing that in my business, um, I mentioned like half our staff has been with us, you know, 20 years or longer. I that sort of grew these fair. long-time relationships. I'm a sort of relationship guy. So yeah. luckily we have our top three clients or, or clients we've had for 15 to 25 years and a lot of long-term employees. So I I don't do well on this treadmill of always looking for new business or looking for new people. I mean, you know, it's expensive too, of course. It, it's expensive and it's also emotionally draining but but the, but the beautiful thing that i think that this client engendered in you was elevating you to that level of confidence maybe for the first time yeah. maybe you had it before but to this level and when you reach that status that's where you want to be as a business owner i think yeah well, i agree all you for more than just business right yeah this was, yeah, we've had really good relationships even before that, but this one definitely, this was a seminal one for us. I mean, it was just, and for me, I, I mean, it was a, first of all, great business for us, yeah. great people to work with. And yeah. it what it did was, which is basically you know, invaluable, it gave us confidence. Sure. It gave me and our, our team confidence that, I mean, we helped this relatively big company in a new venture and they treated us with respect and, and not everything, you know, how this works, not everything works that we do, you know, it's, it's the nature of our business. And, you know, I always say everything, we're not going to, we're not going to recommend everything that's going to work. We try, but, but it, if you have a good enough relationship, they'll say, okay, you know, we're going to win the next one. We yeah. lost, you know, we, we didn't win this one, but yeah. oh, we learned, we, we learned, learned, we learned and sailed forward. And we owned it. Yeah, right. that's yeah. We owned it. That's yeah. a little book. I, I I never heard that before, but fail forward. I think that's exactly right. Um, right. 
And this was a really good case of that. Um, and, you know, then we learned, I mean, we did other things initially besides direct mail and different things, but we started to realize what worked, what didn't. And then even, you know, sometimes we try something new, but it, it, the relationship was so strong and the trust was so strong that sure. they allowed us, they, they gave us room to try and fail forward, as you would say, and learn. And then the next time, maybe learn some of what we learned and, and tweak it a little bit. So it was, a, and then, you know, again, we still have them, but it personally gave me a lot of confidence. I think, yes. it, and, you know, I still carry that to this day. And I think that one really was, I mean, we had, we've had a lot of great clients over the years. I mean, tons of them, but this one was the one, like you said, pick one moment. That was my one moment. It's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And so you have, you know, you're, you're pretty much out of the day to day, right? With um, yeah, I'm pretty much, I hate to use the word retired, but I, I talk to my son and Melissa all the time, but awesome. they're running the business. I mean, they, yeah. we've had a succession plan. I mean, they're the majority owners um, sure. by far. They're running the business. So um, that was always my dream to, to try to transfer it internally if I could. And, yeah. You know, with my son Austin and then Melissa, who, you know, sort of like a daughter to me, um, it's a great, you know, I love these people. And, well, of you know, course. I, yeah. yeah, so I got lucky. Yeah. So what do you see the future for, for Rosenberg and for, for our industry? Um, well, for Rosenberg, I feel it's good. Um, I got, you know, Austin and Melissa are extremely smart. Um, and we have a great team, very, you know, pretty steady team, actually. Um, so I think they're, they're always looking, you got to stay up with things now, you yeah. know, things have changed so much. Why yeah. not? And, and again, you know, this passed me by, but it, not them. So, you know, even things like artificial intelligence, you know, how to use that, you know, how to use it to your benefit. Um, if you're not going to stay up with it, then you're going to get passed by. Um, and we had to reinvent ourselves many times over the 40 years. And this is something where you're almost you're almost looking daily and seeing we can't be left behind. We have to understand what's next. So I think what's in for the industry is you just have to stay very agile. You know, it's just, you know, we were never a believer in one media or whatever. I mean, we were sort of media agnostic, whatever it took to win, we would do. So, that's you know, yep. That's practice. So, I mean, we, our job is to know all of it. So we know what to recommend, but it's sort of like, you know, tactic agnostic, but, you know, we have to get the message right, the brand right. And then how we reach people, you know, you just have to sort of see where it's going. Um, so I think, you know, I think the industry is still going to change a lot, you know, but I think us, I think I have really smart people, you know, who care. You know, they're smart people and they really care. They care about the client. They care about our, our team. Uh, they're good human beings. So I feel really confident that, you know, Rosenberg Advertising is going to continue um, as long as that, you know, yes, you guys wanted to, and I know they wanted to. So, well, well, you know, David, from the beginning, you know, I, and I only know you not, not really well, but always respected you as a, as a competitor, not so much now, because I'm not that that's not what we do, but that was always the, that was always the noise out there about you. It's just good people. You know, and that's hard to deny. <laughs> if you keep that foundation, it's hard not to be successful in my in my estimation. So yeah. it's it's really encouraging to hear that that continues to be successful because those are good foundational pieces for any business, let alone ours. Yeah, no, I agree. I I I want to be. Yeah, I I appreciate you saying that. You know, yeah. you don't need to call yourself a good person, but it's I yeah. I believe in the old school, I call it the old school skills, but ultimately you care. I mean, I was never like an official coach like you were, but in a way I was, you know, I treated a business or my role as a coach, sure. you know, and you know, it's, you have certain fundamentals, human yeah. characteristics you want to impart. And if people adopt that, I think the business part falls in line, but it's sort of hard to fake it. You know, you gotta, you gotta be, you got to do the fundamentals, whether it's a sport like wrestling or, you know, baseball or running a business. And yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I feel, you know, culturally, that was a big part of what I'd like to do is create the right culture, you know, 
Sometimes you don't hire right and somebody doesn't fit. Well, then you move on. But, you know, get the right people and the news and bad news fast. Yeah, it was my motto. Well, yeah. 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 And also, I always was very, still am, very concerned about my mental health of my employees, my partners, everybody that's in my world. I want that to be a fundamental thing that they're, they feel not just safe, but also just okay, you know, at least okay. So I get that. No, I, I, I agree. I, yeah, I, I use the word with a lot of my people. I want a good, I want them to have a good work life balance. Yes. And even before, well, before COVID, I mean, we, we did some working from home. I mean, not as much as COVID, but we, we allow people to work from home on Fridays many years ago. I have a lot of working moms. I mean, over half my business are women with kids and realize quickly, you know, all our, our, basically our attributes are rolled up in the people who work for us. So if you find good people, you got to, you know, you want to keep them. Oh, yeah. So that became evident relatively early for me. And, you know, I always wanted people to feel, I obviously want people to work hard and do sure. the best they can. You know, I mean, we need that. But on the other hand, I want them to live a life, you know, live the life they want to live. So I always, you know, we talked about work-life balance, you know, in our office a lot. Individually, I talked about that a lot. And if somebody was skewed, I could tell that they were getting burned out, and, you know, and they were doing a great job for us. I would try to work with them to figure it out. Well, how can we make this better for you? Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. And uh, David, I, I just love everything we've talked about today and, and your whole mentality, but also your aura. It's wonderful. And uh, so that said, um, leave the leave the audience, if you will, with a word of encouragement and inspiration from the mind of David Rosenberg and Rosenberg Advertising. And then please share with us where uh, our audience can reach Rosenberg Advertising. Oh, well, thank you. Um, well, I mean, pretty much like I've been saying, and I think regardless of what you do, I mean, I've been a business owner, so I, I speak from the voice of a business owner. But even if you're not a business owner, I think whatever your field you're in, you know, you care. Show people you care. And, you know, and not only just say you care. I mean, anybody can say anything. But show you care. Do things that, you know, tangibly represent the fact you care. And I think that will get you a long way. Um, it's, a, it's a simple value. You know, it's probably taught in kindergarten. Um, and I don't think a lot of colleges talk about, oh yeah, let's do a class on caring. But uh, it's, I think it's it's very valuable. And I feel that that has been part of like my success in our companies is that it's not a bunch of BS. I mean, we really, we practice what we preach. So I would I would say that um, regardless of the field you're in. Um, and um, basically Rosenberg Advertising, um, we're at, it's www.rosen rosenbergadv.com. You can go to our website. Um, there's places where you can contact us. You will not be contacting me these days. You'll contact either my son, Austin Rosenberg, or our other partner, Melissa Sattler. Uh, great young people. And, um, you know, I think we will do a good job for you, but I appreciate the, you know, the forum to talk to you, Peter. The human touch of Dave Rosenberg. It's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful thing, my man. Well, have fun in South Florida. Peace to you. North Florida. I'm North. I'm in North Florida. Okay, North Florida, whatever. You're south of me. Bless you. So, Dave, thanks again. Good seeing you, Peter. You look great. You too, brother. This is Coach Cimarroni for Undeniable. We were with Dave Rosenberg, the human touch of Dave Rosenberg. Love to all. Thanks, Peter. You got it, brother. Talk soon. Cheers. Cheers. I just love the mission at Edwin's. My friend Brandon Krastowski at Edwin's Leadership and Restaurant Institute brings a unique approach at giving formerly incarcerated adults a foundation in the hospitality industry. What a marvelous mission. Thank you, Brandon, for bringing these wonderful people back into productive society. Every human being, regardless of their past, has the right to a fair and equal future. Give them a try because their food is magnificent their service is first rate and Brandon is a true Cleveland light. Edwinsrestaurant.org. We love you.